So if you've been to PyCon UK before, uh, the next speaker will need no in introduction at all. I think he's been coming to Python conferences uh, for longer than most of us have been coding Python. Um, or alive in some cases. Sorry? Or alive in some cases. Or, or, <laughs> quite possibly. Um, I'll, I'll let Russell tell you more, um, more about what he's... Uh, it's still on the screen. That's good. Good, good. Um, I'll, I'll let Russell tell you more about uh, what he's talking about. Uh, the title is Supercomputer in a, a Briefcase. Russell. Right, right. Uh, can people hear? Yes, excellent. Good, good, good. Right, Supercomputer in a Briefcase. We're starting late because my trusty device failed. This is the first time that it has failed, um, which is bizarre. So that's in the bin. <laughs> Uh, supercomputer in a briefcase, um, well clearly here is a supercomputer. Now as you can tell it's not small. Uh, it's air conditioned, hence all the glass, and it's from anywhere, anybody know where this is? Barcelona? Absolutely, Barcelona. Uh, sadly I failed to keep the uh, copyright. This is a copyright photo from Barcelona Computer Centre. And uh, it's just cool. You, you go in there and, and oh, I shall, I shall, yes, stop. Briefcase. Supercomputer. Briefcase. Briefcase. Supercomputer. You just know it is not going to fit. <laughs> yeah. Um, of course, this chap is telling me that uh, the bird feeders are empty. Would you please fill them? Never mind. Even if we get bigger <coughs> briefcases, suitcases, it's just not going to... I mean, even this little chap, who's actually complaining that the squirrel has eaten all the food. Would you please fill the bird feeder? Oh, yes. It will fit. You just know that you are going to be able to put all of that in there. Not only that, you can go on holiday with it. <laughs> Fabulous. Fabulous. Okay, so why are we talking about supercomputers and mm, small spaces? But it's really about computation. Now, what we want to do with computers is compute. That's why they're called computers. They're supposed to compute things, not just present images of cats. <laughs> we also have the ideas of concurrency and parallelism. And sadly, at this point, I would normally use my trusty device on the screen and doodle. But um, as you spotted, we've had serious chaos and that's put pay to that plan. So you'll just have to imagine me scrawling on the screen saying concurrency in the English language means doing more than one thing at once. Yeah? And parallelism in the English language means two th lines that never meet. And therefore, these are clearly the meanings in computing. In computing, of course, we have jargon. And the jargon says concurrency means doing one thing at once. But lots of them. And, yeah, well, let's not go down that line for the moment. And parallelism means doing many things at the same time. So clearly we have in computing something of a disconnect with the English language. So we have to be careful when using the terms concurrency and parallelism. So in 1871, we were already told that you know, it doesn't matter. Words can mean whatever you agree that they mean. That's the point. In computing, we have agreed that the terms concurrency and parallelism have completely different meanings to those 
in the English language. But why is this at all interesting? Well, these things, there are hundreds, if not thousands, and increasingly getting close to hundreds of thousands of computers in one of these single computers. Okay, multiprocessing, multi-core, all of these trendy words that have appeared over the last 10 years, exemplified by these computers. And here we have a Raspberry Pi. And clearly a Raspberry Pi is never, ever going to be a supercomputer. Just never going to happen. But why do we like Raspberry Pis? Well, uh, they're not exactly expensive. And you, know, you can, if you can get in queues, you can have actually many of them if you really want. Um, but actually the most important part for this little section is that schools can afford a few of them. Um, school budgets in this country tend to be not exactly big. Um, for example, uh, when the curriculum changed in 2014, the ICT curriculum was thrown out and the uh, computer science curriculum was brought in uh, the sort of average teachers training was probably about 90 quid a year if you were lucky and you had to learn all about the curriculum etc etc well the same goes for the actual equipment budgets that these folks have they're not exactly rich um, Barcelona computer centre has quite a lot of money that's why they can afford a supercomputer you know average price three or four hundred million dollars each and um, your schools aren't going to get those well some of the rich tough schools might but your average school <laughs> isn't going to be able to afford one so it is actually important that the raspberry pi is cheap and they use it a lot and they don't only use it for minecraft But it is definitely not a supercomputer. So um, even if we put hundreds and hundreds of them together, and if you, again, I had it pre-prepared and can't show it to you. Uh, if you go and have a look at um, Raspberry Pi cluster on, and go for the images for Raspberry Pi cluster, you'll find lots and lots of images of people who have created little specialist racks to put Raspberry Pis in. And they're great. Um, so it's all been done before, these clusters of Raspberry Pi. Yes, it has. What's different about what I'm suggesting? And it's really about the dynamic aspect of it, bringing the Raspberry Pis available in the classroom together, spontaneously. <coughs> Not about having a rigid framework in which you've got to sit. Them. It's the dynamic aspect of bringing things together. Making clusters. And what's it about? Well, those of you who have done or are doing computer science as a degree, you probably came in, first year was sort of sequential computing, and the second year was sequential computing, and the third year was sequential computing. <laughs> Except for those brave souls who took eight or ten weeks of concurrency and parallelism, or something equally, supposedly esoteric. And yet, your phone, uh, particularly if it's not an Apple, will have lots and lots of processors in it, particularly in the aerial. Most of the processing capability in a phone is actually in the GSM or the whatever network you're on, 4G, 5G, signal processing. That's where lots of the hard work is. And yet, most phones have four cores just for showing caps. So why don't we bring a subject that's in every computer, in everybody's hand, to the 16-year-old, the 14-year-old? Why does it have to wait until you're 19? 
21, before it's even treated as a specialist topic. Parallel computing is absolutely everything everybody is doing today, except those people on the, net, on the web who think everything's got to be in one, in one thread. Because if you have more than one thread, it's hard. Yes, but that is old-fashioned thinking from the 1960s. Most curriculum, most people's thinking today is about 1960s computing. It's just been rebadged in JavaScript. <laughs> <laughs> so the plot here is a, a sort of guerrilla, well, guerrilla activity, trying to bring parallelism much more into the core of the beginning, have people do parallel computing from the outset without worrying about it, play. And so what the idea is, is just to have a little hour and a half or so for us to have a play, just to put things together, see what we can do and bring a collection of raspberry pies. And someone asked, can I bring my phone? Um, that is an interesting possibility. I mean, my plan has been about Raspberry Pis, but maybe we can bring some phones into it as well and have those as nodes in the system. So, if you haven't brought your Raspberry Pi, why weren't you looking at the adverts? Oh, people are getting a bit tense there. <laughs> Never mind. I have a few um, at the back there, along with a few wires for those people who haven't got one of these really slick Raspberry Pis that have got Wi-Fi. But we can cope with Wi-Fi as well, because I brought a router. So we can make ourselves just an ad hoc network. You know, no structure to it. People have thought, oh, Raspberry Pi clusters, we've got to build a frame, we've got to have a backplane, we've got... No, 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 what we want to try and do is have... We're in a classroom, think. There are Raspberry Pis. Let's just plug them into one network and play with them as a parallel system. And so what we need to do is to seed that for the good people at CAS, is to give them some ideas, perhaps some software, to then work up into a framework for putting into classrooms or for just teachers to learn about this stuff. Because most of them are learning Python afresh now. And they need support to bring these sort of ideas into early school situation. So what I'm hoping for is, well, as you can see, I, I'd have my pen out and ringing the bottom one. Um, the idea is to have fun, because if we're not having fun, why are we doing it? Oh, money. Yeah, that's the usual <laughs> reason. Um, but there's no money involved with this. This is all sort of volunteer stuff. It's playing, having fun, and seeing where we can take things. Uh, so I do want to build a supercomputer-like thingy. Not because it's going to be a massive number cruncher for creating quasi-random numbers. Didn't mention those earlier. Quasi-random numbers. <coughs> How many people? Well, I know one person's managed to bring their Raspberry Pi. I've got two. Anyone else? No? Okay, so well, first order of day is to go beg, steal, and borrow some Raspberry Pis from somewhere, yeah. if we can. Uh, just have a few more. And the purpose is not to compete with the Barcelona Computer Centre. <laughs> their job is to compete with Fermilab or the Lawrence Livermore Lab. Or pay. That, that sort of corporate computing, big scale. The Chinese are winning now and probably will be winning for a long, long while. Our goal is to bring parallelism from the esoteric to the everyday. Just to make it fun, to allow people to play and to see what they can do with it. And with that, I shall quit with the presentation and take some questions if there are any.
The first one here, sir. Yeah, I have a question of what stack are you going to use? Yes. <laughs> uh, the underlying stack we know works is OpenMPI because that's available through <coughs> Raspbian on all of the uh, Raspberry Pis. But mm, we will have to have a play and see. Uh, what it would be really nice to do is to get, get GasNet working over SSH because that would be even nicer, much more likely. But OpenMPI is the default. Does that answer the question? Cool. There was another hand up here. Somewhere. Yes, sir. Uh, well, I guess I was kind of answering, but uh, my question is about portability. Yes. If we write the software on the Raspberry Pi cluster, can we then take it to the Barcelona Computer Center and test it out? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, possibly not. Um, Someone mentioned that science people were doing lots and lots of Python, and that is true. But they're doing Python for coordination of codes written in Fortran, C++, C, uh, D, and Chapel. These native code languages are the ones that are doing the grunt work. And if you're in graphics, if you're rendering things, you're not rendering it in Python. You're using Python to control C++ software that handles the rendering. And so taking a Python code to a supercomputer, they'll just say, well, we'll take the, the visualization bit and we'll take away all of your computational bit and put in C++ or D or Chapel or X10 or one of these big supercomputer languages. Um, and if anyone's interested in following that up, I'll do a talk on it on Saturday, I think. Um, so the answer to your question is no, but that doesn't stop us doing it, because it's a good first stop. Yeah. Practicing to get the algorithms together in Python is a great start, then taking them to another language. Have you seen what um, Archer of Edinburgh are doing with their portable Raspberry Pi cluster? Uh, sort of. No, not really. I need to have a look at that. Yeah, check them out. Can you use non-Raspberry Pis as happening computers? Uh, anything that will respond to the Ethernet and have SSH and hopefully with OpenMPI and we should be able to do something with it. Yeah, absolutely. So people are probably going to bring a few laptops and we can put those into the cluster as well. It's all about having a play and see what we can find out and do. So yes, definitely. Well, I think we've probably, uh, yes, we have indeed. In which case, oh, sorry, no, one there. So any, uh, there are actually quite a lot of competitors to Raspberry Pi from Arduino upwards. Um, but the Raspberry Pi is the one that's got the mind share uh, out there in, in the teacher's land, really, because it's the one that's got traction. But certainly for electrical engineering types, they would use Arduino rather than Raspberry Pi. Um, so there are others out there, yes. But the Arduino is probably not quite high enough level to be able to run things like OpenMPI or SSH quite as well as the Raspberry Pi and the Beagle board and things like that. Now, as, the, as they say, going, going, gone. Thank you very much.